Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Rock Bottom Airsoft. It's good to see you again. If this is your first time here, then as always, it is good to see you, and I hope you're going to stick around. Okay, well, welcome back to our weekend videos. <laughs> it's been a while. Unfortunately, my injuries are still present. I'm still trying to get myself right, so gameplay is going to get a bit thin on the ground for our midweek videos until I can get back out and get back into my, my regular games. So I do apologise about that in advance, but hopefully I should be alright in the next week or two. And I'll be able to get back out to my home site, Tazball, and carry on testing some of the stuff we've looked at out in the field. So, with that out of the way, what are we going to have a look at today? Well, today, as promised in my previous video, I thought we'd do a basic introduction to painting. <laughs> now, when I'm saying painting, I don't mean painting landscapes and portraits and things like that. I'm all about... Um, Colouring up your replicas, um, whether you want to do a camo spray job on your, your replica, whether you want to do something out of one of your favourite computer games, or whether you're a lot more artistic than me and you're able to do some nice airbrushing and things like that, I thought we'd just have a look at the basics of painting if you were going to be applying paint to any of your replicas. What do I mean by that? Well, I've got one of mine here. To give you a, an example of a painted replica, this is my Saima M14 replica. Uh, as you can probably see, I have painted the stock on this one with a bit of a, a camouflage theme. I will be honest with you guys, I'm going to be open and honest, I am not the best spray painter in the world. <laughs> there are people that are far more skilled than me at spray painting and airbrushing and generally applying paint to anything um, but I know enough to, to get the look that I'm going for and not to ruin my replica in the process <laughs> so there you go guys that's one of my sprayed up replicas and when I say sprayed up I basically sprayed the stock uh, in a pattern, ca pattern camo so if you're if you're looking for that kind of thing or you're looking to just spray your replica or even just do a solid color um, we'll have a quick introduction to the bits you need and the process for doing it. So, before we get into looking at the process, let's have a look at the parts and tools that you may need and have a quick chat about it. Let's put this replica to one side for you. Right, okay, so what do we mean by spraying? Well, that's the most common type of painting I do. Now, if you have a look on online, you can get skins um, which are like vinyl wraps. You may have heard of vinyl wrapping in the automotive world. Well, you can also get vinyl wraps from places like Silo Entertainment. Uh, he sells a number of vinyl wraps, which are pretty cool. I've got one of them on my Mark 23. And those are applied, they're a bit like sticky back plastic, basically. Best to apply them with a heat gun, wrap them on, and they are kind of semi-permanent you can get them off if you want whereas paint eh, it's a little bit more permanent now me i tend to primarily go with spray painting and that's how i do it now with spray painting a lot of people that are very good at spray painting will tell you that preparation is everything and for preparation what we mean by that you're going to need a few items you'll want some masking tape um masking tape comes in handy We'll get into that in a second. Masking tape's really affordable. It's not very expensive. You can get it at most DIY or homeware stores. Um, pretty much any store that sells DIY products or paint in your local area, including auto factors, automotive shops, places like that, they will sell some sort of masking tape. Well worth having some masking tape. You're also gonna need some sandpaper a very fine grit sandpaper is what I tend to use. Um, sandpaper is important for preparation. And then finally, which I haven't got with me here, you're either going to need a lot of tissue paper, plastic bags, or disposable rags to block off larger areas where you don't want the paint to go. So, when we're talking about preparation, if I get this replica again, there are certain parts of your replica that you aren't going to want to get painting, such as the magwell. You can see in the magwell there, you don't really want to get any paint in there. You don't want paint getting inside your barrel or your hop up. So obviously what I would tend to do in the magwell is stuff that full of either tissue paper, kitchen roll, 
rags, anything you can, and then seal it up with a bit of the masking tape that we mentioned, just to ensure that paint isn't going to get into the mag well. Any other parts of your replica that you don't want the paint to apply to, you're going to have to apply either masking tape or taped on rags, bags, anything you can to stop the paint getting to areas that you don't want it to get. I would also recommend to bung the end of your barrel, stick a bit of tissue paper or kitchen roll down the end of your outer barrel if you're not removing your inner, uh, just to prevent paint getting down there. The other part of it is, is controls. Now, controls such as your selector switch, and charging handles and things like that, if you don't want the paint applying, then obviously mask them. Um, if you do want paint on them, you can paint them, um, the paint will possibly crack the first time you rack the charging handle or the first time you flip the, the selector switch but as long as the paint's not too thick it shouldn't interfere with the operation of these mechanical items because it will just break but again to be fair if it's me I don't ideally want paint getting on any moving parts so I will try and mask those off or minimize the amount of paint that gets on those areas now the next part about preparation is, as you can imagine with this replica, I've only painted the stock. So the easiest way of doing it, if you don't want to be going with the masking tape and you don't want to be messing about with masking and all that kind of messing about, is you could dismantle your replica, which as you can probably tell from the painting here, is what I tend to do. So for example, on this replica, I took the stock off and I took all the ancillaries off the stock, such as the butt plate and all that type of thing that I didn't want paint applying to, and then I was just left with my burr stock. I masked out the areas where there were screws going to be threading in, and then I sprayed the stock, which was much easier. If I was spraying the entire replica, and I was doing the upper as well as the lower and everything, then I would mask off areas that I didn't want the paint to apply, and I'd also probably mask off areas where I didn't want the threads getting paint on them. Such as scopes, you can spray paint your scope, but I would take great care to ensure the paint doesn't get on the lenses. So you want to be covering those lenses. You want them well and truly covered and make sure there are no gaps. Because believe me guys, spray paint will find its way through any kind of gap that you might have. It only has to be a tiny gap and some paint is going to make it through there. Another thing to be aware of when you're masking is that if you get your mask lines inaccurate if they're not straight then your paint finish is not going to be straight and that can end up looking a right mess so it will take you some time with your masking or disassembly but that's very important on an ar replica for example a lot of people will tend to spray the entire replica now you don't have to but if it was me i would possibly remove the hop unit and inner barrel before i started just to ensure that i weren't going to get paint in my hop unit or my inner barrel you don't really want paint getting in your gearbox. So in my case, when I spray AR pattern replicas, I tend to remove the gearbox, the motor. I remove everything I don't want paint to get applied to. Now, you don't have to do that, guys. That is not essential. Um, you don't have to do that. You can, if you prefer, paint it with the gearbox in situ. But again, make sure that you cover any gaps where paint could get through onto moving parts. Again, anything you don't want paint to apply to. So, there are your options, guys. Mask up or dismantle. Big part of your preparation. And as I say again, I can't reiterate enough, when you're doing the masking route, ensure that you have a really good seal with your masking because any kind of gap, that paint is going to find its way through when you spray. So, we've prepped our replica. We've got the parts off the replica we want to paint or we've masked up the parts on the replica we don't want to paint. So the next step, if I move this replica out of the way, that you want to be looking at in your preparation is the sandpaper. Now, plastics, this probably applies more to plastics. I don't tend to do it on aluminium or metal. Um, on your plastics, you might want to give them a light sanding. And all that does, guys, is give a key for the paint to adhere to. Uh, sometimes you might have found it yourself if you've tried spraying before, if you, especially if you've got very shiny plastics, if you've got very smooth plastic finishes, the paint won't adhere very well. Um, and once it is on, you'll either get runs, or if you don't get runs and it's a good finish, once it dries, it will chip and peel off 
really easily. So one way to try and mitigate that is by giving it a very light keying, as we call it, a very light sanding with some very fine grain sandpaper, just to rough up the finish a little bit, give that paint something to adhere to. So that, again, is all part of your preparation. Now, sandpaper can come in useful depending on how glossy and bright you want your finish, uh, depending on the type of paint job you do, but in many cases, you'll do a sand between coats. So you'll put a very light sand in as you do coats. That comes more in the automotive world when you're looking for a very high gloss finish. We're not too worried about that. I don't bother with that, guys, because I'm going for a matte finish. Um, on most of my replicas, I don't want reflections, so I tend to go for a matte finish. But if you're going for high gloss finish, then your preparation is going to be even greater. You're going to be sanding between coats, get a really smooth finish, get a really even finish. So, we've got our masking done. We've done our sanding. We've dismantled the replica to remove any parts that we're not planning on painting. Basically, we've prepped the items that we're painting. They're good to go. They're keyed, so we've sanded them. They're masked off where we don't want the paint to apply. The next thing you're going to want to do, guys, is you need something to spray these items in. Now, if you've ever used spray paint before, and as we mentioned with the masking, it gets everywhere, guys. <laughs> it, it floats in the breeze. It can go absolutely everywhere. So pick a location for where you're gonna do your spraying. Now, I tend to do a lot of my spraying outside. I've constructed a mini spray booth, and all that's constructed out of is strong cardboard boxes, which basically means that I can spray away and I don't have to worry about overspray getting on the garden or getting on any of the, the driveway or wherever you might be spraying. If you're doing it in a workshop or a garage, it prevents it getting on your floors and your walls. So you can construct a miniature spray booth just by chopping the front off a large cardboard box. That gives you something to put the item in and spray around and avoid overspray. Or just put a dust sheet down on the floor and lay your replica down on the dust sheet. And then obviously wherever you spray, you're only gonna be spraying the replica and the dust sheet. So you wanna prep the area that you're gonna be spraying in. A couple of things to mention as well about the area you're spraying in. Don't try spraying outdoors in really cold weather because your paint just isn't gonna come out in a good finish. It really doesn't like being in mega cold weather. If it's warm, Great, it dries quicker for a start. <laughs> so that's something to remember. And it goes without saying that you don't want to be spraying in a damp environment because again, that's going to affect your finish of your paint. And also, it's going to affect your application and the drying time. So your best bet is if you're going to be spraying outdoors, you really want a dry, warm, calm day. Because wind as well can be another issue if you're spraying, if there's a lot of wind in the area, obviously it's going to blow over spray from your paint everywhere. And if there's dust particles or things like that flying around, they are going to stick in your painted finish. So you don't want that either. So that's, that's the main things about your spraying area. Make sure you cover anywhere where you don't want overspray to end up. And you will end up with overspray, guys. It's unavoidable. So either construct a mini spray booth, like I have, out of a large cardboard box, or alternatively, lay cardboard, rags, dust sheets, whatever you have, over the area where you don't want the paint to be and lay your replica on that. Make sure that you're spraying in a dry, calm environment. And if you don't want to end up with loads of dust and dirt in your spray finish, then ensure that the area is clean and there's no loose particles flying around. So, You've done all that guys, you've keyed it, it goes without saying, make sure there's no oil on the replica, I should have mentioned that earlier, give it a bit of a clean off, because if there's oil or grease on the areas that you're painting, uh, that's not going to allow the paint to adhere, so that's all part of your preparation. So we're all prepped up guys, we've done our masking, we've done our sanding, we've cleaned off the replica, we've prepared our spray area, we're happy with the conditions that we're spraying in. So obviously the next thing that you're going to be needing is some paint. Now the paint that I use is from a motor factory here in the UK called Holford's. And this is basically sold as camouflage spray paint. <laughs> it's not massively expensive. 
it's quite affordable. Uh, these are just rattle can spray paints that I use. The good thing about this Halfords range is they do come in all the standard camouflage colours. You've got your brown, your tan. Um, I also tend to use the green as well. That's my most popular one. I like using that. So them are your camouflage colours. You've picked your colours. Now obviously guys, you don't have to use the camouflage colours. What I would say with paint though, see a lot of adverts for, for Krylon and things like that. Now if you guys are over in the States and you don't have access to Olfords for these particular paints, um, you may have a motor factor in your area. And to be honest, automotive spray paints work absolutely fine. Stick with matte colours if you're wanting to have no reflections, or if you're going for a bright, leery finish, any colour you want, guys. The thing is with motor spray paints, is you've got every colour under the rainbow that you can pick. Um, so yeah, motor spray paints, automotive spray paints, absolutely fine. I've used more than just these camouflage colours. I use the blacks from automotive. Pretty much all the paints I ever use are automotive spray paints. And they have a really good finish, they adhere well, and they're quite a strong finish when they're dry, when they're cured. So automotive spray paints are fine, guys. They're affordable, they're much cheaper than buying the Airsoft specific ones. And let's be honest, guys, if it's strong enough to withstand being on an automobile, on a car, or a van, or a truck, and it's getting stone chips flicking up and all sorts of things like that and it still stays in one piece then it's going to be more than capable of withstanding the rigors of an airsoft game so that's my recommendation for paints automotive spray paints absolutely fine just double check that the paint you pick is suitable for plastics as well as metals most of these are these camouflage paints if you're here in the uk are available from holfords and they are absolutely fine i've sprayed loads of replicas with these no problems at all and as i say not mega expensive and easy to get hold of guys i'll put a link in the description to these anyway um if you want to check that out if they're something you fancy so them are the colors we're going with that's what we're spraying now the next thing that you might want to look at is if you want a pattern on your replica now there are many many videos knocking about here on YouTube about spraying. It will show someone actually spraying the replica and showing you how to do it. And a lot of people in those videos will use foliage, leaves, branches, twigs, ferns, things from their local site if they're going for a full on camo finish. And they'll use those to layer up a camouflage finish. And the way to do that, it doesn't matter if you're using leaves and foliage and things you've gathered um, to create the pattern, or whether you're using something like this. Um, I create my own stencils. Now, that's one stencil for lightning strikes. That's a stencil I've made up. Here's another stencil. I'm quite a big fan of the Scream franchise of movies, so made this stencil up. And the idea was that they put that on my magazines. Did it on a couple of magazines, looked all right. And here's another stencil with some various camouflage patterns. <laughs> now, as you can probably tell, guys, two of these stencils here are made out of old cereal packets, the cardboard. Now, the reason I do that is don't try and make your stencils out of paper if you're going to use stencils because paper will be porous and it's going to let the paint through. So your stencil isn't going to give a clear finish. This stencil I made on photographic paper. This is just Kodak inkjet photographic paper that you'd use for your printer. The good thing about this stuff is it's thin, so it's easy to cut out with a knife if you're doing an intricate stencil like this one. And it's glossy. And because it's glossy, it repels the paint so it doesn't come through to the other side. It's not porous and it'll allow you to do a good finish with your stencil. So what I would tend to do if you're painting with leaves or foliage or with the stencils, I would normally start with the base coat color that you want to use. So that's going to be your primary color over the item that you're spraying. After you've sprayed that base coat on, you then want to start layering up. Now, if you're using a stencil like this, you might only have your base coat and then this, this image, as it were, in an alternate colour. So in that case, you just lay the stencil on, make sure it's flat as possible, and then spray your alternate colour over the top. And that's going to uh, give you the image that you want using your stencil. If you're doing camouflage patterns such as this, 
or this, or even using the leaves, foliage, ferns, that type of thing. You do your base colour, then I would use another colour and do a couple of passes with stencils, you know, trying to randomise them or with your leaves. Then I would put my next layer of stencil on, use a different colour, and so on and so forth. And just keep going with the colours that you're using. Stick with three or four colours if you're doing a camouflage pattern. And then when you're finished, you should end up with a randomised pattern of different colours. Your base colour obviously will show through where you haven't run the stencils and you should end up with, with quite a reasonable finish. The other thing to remember when you are spraying, when you start doing your stencils or your base cover, less is more. So do a few coats guys. I know everybody always says this, but you don't want to do one big thick coat because you're going to end up with runs, which means you'll have dribbles showing in your paint, you get a poor finish. So just do light coats. And as you're doing your coats guys, make sure your can is well shook up. Keep shaking the can every so often, otherwise you'll get cloggy lumps of paint coming out. So keep shaking it as you go and give it a good shake before you start. And then you want to do light, even coats and do lots of coats. Now with these automotive paints, you only really need to leave about 10 minutes between coats for it to go tacky on a nice warm day. So it's not going to take you too long to, to do it as coats. To cure, you want to really leave it overnight to cure once you've finished painting. But... Normally 10 minutes or so, 10-15 minutes between coats, you should be absolutely fine, you shouldn't get any runs. So as I say, light coats, get a good thick layer for your base colour, or if you're doing one solid colour, you want to do a few coats with that solid colour, get a good nice even finish. And then, as you start to do your layers, again, you can do as light or as thick coats as you want, depending on the look you're going for. If you don't want to use stencils and you don't want to use foliage and you're not after a camouflage pattern, then if you're just going for solid colours, that's fine. The same principle applies. All the prep that we mentioned, light, even coats, and that'll get you a good finish when you've completed all your coats. Let it dry, let it cure. That'll be an absolutely spot on finish. <laughs> um, with regard to when you have finished with your coloured paints, Another option you have that I do is this item. Again, you'll be able to get this at automotive stores. This is what they call matte lacquer. Now, if you're worried about your paint finish chipping off, you can apply a lacquer. You can usually get gloss, satin, or matte lacquers. And that's basically a clear coat. I use this matte lacquer because what it tends to do is it'll dull down the paint even more, makes it even less reflective. But as well as that, it also gives you a protective layer over your paint, so it's less likely to wear out with handling, because obviously we handle our replicas in the field. And it's also less likely to chip if it has any mechanical damage to it. Um, so it's not going to chip, it's not going to wear out as quickly. It gives it a nice, good protective coat. This again is just automotive matte lacquer from our UK supplier here, Holfords, uh, but you can also get these from any automotive supplier if you're over in the States, I'm sure you have a local motor factor where you'll be able to get the matte lacquer as well. Now, I usually give it a good hour when I finish painting before I apply the lacquer. The principles are the same with the lacquer, you apply it to the entire painted finish and do light, even coats, allow about 10 minutes between coats, do three or four coats, and by the time you've finished, you should have a nice, strong, if you use the matte stuff, a strong, dulled down finish that won't reflect. Uh, if you want it to have a reflection, you want it to be glossy, you can get gloss paints and gloss lacquer, satins like an in-between ground. So that's something to pick when you plan out what you're going to do for your paint job and what, how you want it to look. But matte lacquer, definitely can recommend that if you're trying to get a non-reflective finish just as a finishing touch and as i say it also protects the replica so there you go guys that's that's my process for painting i know it's a bit talky <laughs> a bit wordy um stencils fill your boost guys you can really go as much as your imagination will allow like i say i've got ghost face on that one out of scream you know um camouflage patterns just random shapes I put on there. That's the stencil I used for this Sima M14 that I've painted here. But, like I say, it all boils down to preparation. Get your area sorted out where you're painting, do your masking, do your sanding, do your cleaning, 
get your stencils prepared and an idea what you're painting and then start painting guys light even coats using your colors and then layer it up if you're doing camo or if you're doing a pattern and then if you're not and you're doing a solid color do your light even coats and then apply the lacquer of your choice to prevent the paint's finish being chipped off. When you've finished all that guys, like I said, just leave it overnight before you start handling it and that'll give it a nice good curing time. Where you're gonna leave it to cure, you can leave it somewhere ideally warm and dry and then it should cure. In colder weather it can take longer to cure like I mentioned and in damp conditions it will certainly not cure very rapidly and it could affect your paint finish. So guys, I hope you found that helpful, my little bit of a, an introduction to painting, the items you'll need, and a quick idea of the process. The biggest thing I can say about painting, guys, is don't be afraid to give it a go. If you want to try it out first, then get like a small item on your replica, or a small item that you don't use that much, and give it a go on that. Spray that, see how your finish comes out, and if you're happy with it, it'll give you the confidence to spray something yeah, more required, shall we say, like your replica, um, and you could be happy with the finish. There is one other type of painting that I forgot to mention, you can do freehand. Um, that's another option. If you just wanted to put stripes on, then just do your base color and then spray across. The choice is yours, guys. There are loads of options when it comes to painting. Have a look around on the internet at some other people's designs and the type of spray patterns they've done, and that'll give you some inspiration. But it can give a whole new lease of life to a replica that's maybe looking a bit beat up, and it can also, you know, give you a camouflage edge, especially you snipers out there. If you're wanting to get your replica so it's a little less reflective and a little less obvious when you're hiding in the bushes, then, you know, giving it a spray up can be the best option. And don't worry about camo. Sometimes just spraying it with matte colours so it's less reflective will give you the effect you need. Spraying it in a colour that's similar to the environment where you play will also give you the effect you need. But if you want to go full on and go for the camo, then give it a go, guys. It's well worth it. So, I hope you found that video interesting, guys. I hope you found it useful. Thank you very much for watching as always. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, then do get subscribed. We'll keep coming with more stuff like this. <laughs> Apart from that, guys, I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one.